Back in 1992, the John Madden football video game juggernaut was just starting to build itself, and there were several other franchises jockeying for position along with it. But there hasn't been a football game quite like this one, Jerry Glanville's Pigskin Football for the Sega Genesis. Based on the arcade game Pigskin 621 AD, which came out in 1990, you'll play a rugby style of medieval football, a brutal battle to cross the goal line by any means necessary, and I mean any means. Whether you have to punch the shit out of your opponent, get into little scrums, or even bludgeon the motherfucker to death. There are no plays from scrimmage like in American football. You just run with the ball and if you get punched, you'll fumble it and a mad scramble will most likely ensue. Play doesn't stop until someone crosses the goal line and you'll get 7 points per touchdown. There's also a possession meter that will fill up the longer you maintain possession. Once it fills up, you'll get 1 point. Before the game starts, you can tweak some options such as how long each period lasts, fast or normal game speed, the commands of the face buttons, one or two players, sound effects and music, and then one of four difficulties. No experience needed, experienced players only, brutal, relentless, often fatal, the toughest game you'll ever play, and even worse. Between the two speeds of fast and normal, I suggest fast. Normal is too slow and it's too easy to read what's going on around you. I prefer the spontaneousness and the quick reactions you have to make in fast mode. You can play anywhere from 1 to 5 players per team. It is pretty stupid to have two guys playing a one-on-one -on -one football game against each other, but it's interesting to have the option if you feel like screwing around, I guess. Each team has a captain. Thor is the leader of the purple team, and Attila spearheads the red team. But what's strange is that these captains are the only players on the field that you have complete control over. If one of your minions gets a hold of the ball, he'll just run on his own, even if he plows into an obstacle. Their AI is crap. You can make these guys punch and pass the ball, but you can't change their direction. You're also off screen a lot of the time, and although there's an arrow that indicates which side you're on or what position you are vertically, it is a bit awkward until you get the hang of it. The three face buttons let you punch, which you can do on both offense and defense, pass the ball, which brings up a window showing who you're throwing to, how far they are, and whether or not they're open. If you tap the button, you'll pull away from the pass at the last second so you don't throw to a guy that's covered or on his ass. And the last face button lets you change up your strategy. All three of the face button commands are customizable in the options menu. The strategies I mentioned earlier are man-to-man, -man, get the ball, or bad attitude on defense, and scatter, block, and bad attitude on offense. As you probably noticed, there are a shit ton of obstacles scattered across the field. Rocks, water traps, hay, all kinds of crap. It keeps you from mindlessly running with the ball. You have to look at what's in front of you. And you also have to be sure that your mindless minions don't plow into it and make them throw the ball before they do. There are also a bunch of weapons lying around like swords, spears, rope, and spikes on a stick. If you run across one, you'll throw it into your concealed weapon inventory, and if that player gets into a scrum and the other person has no weapon, they'll murder the bastard with that particular weapon and take the ball. The captains can never die, and the players that do die will return after the next touchdown or when the period ends. While they're dead, you'll gradually get to see them decompose if you pass by their corpse enough time. Speaking of the end of periods, there are four of them, just like in football. And in between each one, this guy, whoever the hell he's supposed to be, will give you a tip or two regarding the game. There are also some humorous animation sequences that take place between touchdowns. At halftime and at the end of the game, you'll get a chart with some interesting statistics. All of them in reference to how many people you've killed with the exception of Elvis sightings, which I think might be extra point possessions, but I'm not too sure. All I know is that Jerry Glanville loved Elvis, and that's the reason for this reference. The first half is played in this outdoor field, and the second half is played inside this dungeon of sorts. The obstacles have changed, and they're laid out differently, but the biggest change is the trap doors, which will open up underneath players, sometimes many at once, and they'll be wiped off the field momentarily. I guess they run back upstairs. It's fucking hilarious, especially when you hear a bunch of the death screams in a row like that. If one team gets too far ahead, the game will automatically send in a troll to help out. The troll is fucking ruthless. He'll tear shit up and oftentimes bring that team back into the game. There can even be a second troll, either one on each team or both on the same team depending on how the game goes. 
If you're playing the computer in one of the harder difficulties and you're beating the shit out of them early, you'll be dared at one point to press A, B, and C simultaneously, which unleashes a fucking troll patrol. Good luck. The graphics are decent. They have a cartoonish theme, which is a nice contrast to the brutality. The music is pretty stupid, but I don't know. There's something unique about it that I kind of like. Thankfully, it's buried in the mix, though. So overall, pigskin football is a little rough around the edges, but despite its technical deficiencies, it can be a lot of fun, especially with another player to beat the piss out of. So that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.